was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of the man. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehend it not. Amen. Amen. The word of the Lord for the people of the Lord. It is now prayer time on the mount. We are in prayer for Sister Loretta Worlds, for our own Mother Rose Miles, for Sister Velma Bass, for Reverend Mother Florence Hudson, for you we are praying, for Pastor James Wiggins, for Mother Ethel Lee Russell, for Brother, Brother Robert Faulkner, for Reverend Kamaya Shahi, for you we are praying, for Bishop James D. Tindall Sr., to presiding brother of the Metropolitan Spiritual Churches of Christ. For Reverend Lennon, Lennon Hill, I mean, excuse me, we are praying. And for all members, affiliate, and associated churches of the Metro, of and with the Metropolitan Spiritual Churches of Christ. For you, we are praying. At this time, our own minister, Antoinette Simmons, will come and lead us in prayer.
birthday. So the gift box, amen. That's the word. So there will be a gift box now that you can give. So at this time, you are in the hands of our ushers. In the 
There will be a new series entitled Holy Spirit Fall Fresh on Me. Again, that's Holy Spirit Fall Fresh on Me. The sermon series, tune in uh, for the next three weeks uh, as we begin to talk about Lord, give me a sign. That is our new sermon series, Lord, give me a sign. Our PSA, the best way to prevent illness is to avoid exposure to COVID-19. Wash your hands often with soap and water for at least 20 seconds and use hand sanitizer containing at least 60% alcohol. Avoid close contact. The best method is to maintain six feet of social distance between you and others while properly wearing a mask. Remember, wash your hands, wear a mask, maintain a social distance and we encourage you to get vaccinated. Bishop Chambers would like to thank all the leaders who attended, as well as Bishop Moore uh, for attending yesterday's leadership meeting. If you missed it, you missed a dynamic presentation. We also would like to thank the Pillar Seminary for being in the house as well. Happy 50th anniversary to our own Deacon Charles Ryan and Deaconess Ronette Marie Anderson. Your love for one another is an inspiration and a great example of commitment for all around you. We also acknowledge the birthday of Travell Nelson, or Travell Nelson, excuse me. Next Sunday is our leading lady's birthday. Yay. Amen. Yay. Oh, y'all can do better than that. You can make it lady's birthday. Amen. The birthday box will be out this and next Sunday, as you've already seen. You can give your gift via Cash App as well, which is the dollar sign Tanae, which is T A N A I 425. That's the dollar sign Tanae 425. She is also uh, liking uh, Amazon gift cards if I read Facebook right. <laughs> so, Amazon gift cards, a, a simple card that says happy birthday. <laughs> or some type of monetary gift will be definitely appreciated. Please continue to bless this ministry and your giving. Go to our website, which is www.m3comaha.org via your cellular device on Cash App, which is the dollar sign M3C5112, or stop by our church here at 5112 Ames Avenue during Sunday morning worship service. And you can always call it in at 402-214-9373. Our 96th annual Congress will be held virtually in July. Uh, In-person Congress will be held in Dallas, Texas in the month of November. More details will be released uh, expeditiously. Please remember, bless you, the dollar a day consecration. We ask each member to lay aside one dollar per day as a consecration unto the Lord. Your $365 consecration offering will be placed on the high altar on watch night. You can bring your gifts to the church today or fulfill your obligation through Cash App, our website, or by calling the church right now at 402-457-4216. Someone is standing by. Our thought of the week, and I'm going to pause dramatically. Please drink this all in. Our thought of the week, my praise is proof of my passion for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. My praise is my proof for my passion in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please remember to pray for the sick, the shunned, and the bereaved. We all need the Lord. Amen. This is the Mount Calvary Community Church, a spiritual church where the community is in the heart of the church and the heart of the church is in the community. We are conveniently located at 5112 Ames Avenue here in Omaha, Nebraska. That zip code is 68104. We sit on the hill nestled between the Super Walmart and the Wells Fargo Bank. You are always welcome to join us at our 11 a.m. Sunday morning worship service. This church is pastored by His Grace, the Most Reverend Bishop Kevin Javon Chambers. As he continues to teach us, we are the biggest little church in Omaha, Nebraska. 
If you have been spiritually uplifted by this worship experience, we invite you to call our office and give your testimony this week directly to our bishop at 402-453-4084. That is 402-453-4084. Also stay connected to us by visiting our website. Again, that's www.m3comaha.org. Romans 10, 13 through 15 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him in whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach this gospel. After our music department comes in song, the next speaking words you will hear is that of our beloved pastor and lead servant, the most reverend Bishop Kevin Javon Chambers. Here our music department.
Grace. Is that Grace saved me? Grace raised me. How many of you know that some of our God's grace? We come to let you know this morning that He laid His hands on me.
that wherever you are in the world, you should know by the end of song that he laid his hands on me. If you are at home watching, get up on the couch. Tell the Lord some signs.
you should see them there at home on your screen. Amen. When you get to the knees, they call up. Mark's Gospel, chapter 8. And we'll begin reading at verse number 11. And a few following verses. We caught up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it reads thus way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey! Hallelujah. <laughs> Ooh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, God, let the words of my mouth and the 
the meditation of my heart. Be acceptable in thy sight. For God, you are my strength. And you are my redeemer. All of God's people said amen. amen. And thank the Lord. Come on, come on, give God a hand clap of praise. Just for a few moments, I want to preach from this thought. And it is the title of our series for the next few weeks. Lord, give me a sign. Lord, give me a sign. This gospel of Mark comes to us with 16 chapters, 678 verses. There are 15,100 and uh, there are about 71 words in its entirety. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The next few Sundays, as we announced last week, I want to stroll through these next few weeks uh, with this sermon series, Lord, give me a sign. Primarily based upon the uh, song titles, not the lyrics, made popular by the late Earl Simmons, known to many of you as DMX. If you're asking Bishop who pray tale you a church boy. Who, who is DMX? You, you might remember him by stop, drop, shut him down, open up shop. Oh no! That's how Rough Riders roll. I mean, I have a few witnesses. And before before you become too judgmental, I want to let you know that DMX, before he died, proclaimed uh, that Jesus Christ was his Lord and Savior. By his own admission, he said that he read the Bible every day. Ask yourselves, church folk, how many times do you read your Bible? And if you follow his life story, you know that he transitioned uh, from DMX into the role of a deacon. And then he acknowledged that he was called to preach. Uh, now, anyway, DMX is by far the only artist of his caliber that presented a diss track to the forces of darkness entitled Jesus Loves Me. Well. <clears throat> yes, Snoop Dogg did a whole album, but he didn't diss the devil. Well. Y'all ain't gonna preach here. Yeah, yeah. He, he professed that Jesus loves me. He told me so. That's that's why when it gets ugly, he, he hugs me because he wants me, uh, yo. So you, you got to let go and let God sometimes from the get-go, you go hard. It, it's like the darker it gets, the brighter my light will shine. So regardless, I'm loving the life of mine. And with the Lord on my side, it don't matter what the cold of light cause let me in because I was going for the ride. I ain't blind. I ain't got the sin to believe it. I just know you gave me the word and that I really, really need. Well. <laughs> so I pray for my enemies. Well. Ask yourself, do you pray for your enemies? I pray for my friends. I pray for my loved ones. And I pray for those who pretend to be. You sacrifice your son just to give me a chance. So I thank you for the plan. I thank you for your hand. But I'm good because you're watching the dark when I sleep. Lord, give me a sign. There's so many things that are facing uh, 
us as a people, as a race, tomorrow in a courtroom in Minneapolis, <coughs> closing arguments will commence yeah, regarding the Derek Chauvin trial for the execution by lethal kneeling on the neck of one George Floyd. And the people, you know, we're looking for a sign. We want a sign to say, as I heard Attorney Crump this morning on the news, that America, you give white folks the benefit of the doubt. Can you give us the benefit of humanity? So I'm looking for a sign that says George Floyd deserved what he got. Mm -hmm. And then there are those of us who are looking for a sign that says I'm sick and tired of y'all putting your nasty necks, knees on my necks. And you should be happy that all we are asking for is justice and not revenge. You mad about a building that got tore up by the looters. We mad about folks that getting killed by y'all in uniform. You can build another building. You can't build another life. So the kingdom is what God does and repentance arises slowly as a response to God's liberation. The event of the kingdom today is the liberation struggle in the black community. It is where persons are suffering and dying for a wanting human dignity. Say that. Yes, sir. And it is incumbent upon all of us to see the event for what it is, God's kingdom. Lord, let your will be done in earth as it is. In heaven. Yes. This is what conversion means. Blacks are being converted because they see in the events around them the coming of the Lord and will not be scared into closing their eyes to it. Uh, black identity is far too important. It is like the pearl of great value, which a person buys only by seeing all that he has or she has. I want to preach, Lord, give me a sign. Of course, of course, whites can say that they fail to see, you know, it don't look like racism to me. Because you fail to see the significance of my blackness and the phenomenon of who I am in God. Yes, Oh, you don't believe me? Watch this. DMX was on his sickbed. Yeah. He was clinging to life. And a little old white girl from the New York Post put out a, a story while he's, while he's on a ventilator, DMX in the houses that he's lost during his career. Y'all yeah. will do anything to disparage us even while we're dying. Dante Wright is killed by a 20 plus year veteran who claims she didn't know the difference between a taser and a gun. And soon as he dies, y'all say it. He had a warrant. If your dumb self would only have Googled him, mm -hmm. you'd have found out he only had the warrant because you sent his notice to appear sure. to the wrong address. Come on. Well. Gary Gardner was killed for selling Loose cigarettes make it make sense. 
Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. we need a sign. Yes. yes, whites can play like they can't see what the deal is. But the loss of sight is characteristic of the appearance of the kingdom of God. Yeah, I want to preach. Not everyone recognized the person from Nazareth as the incarnate one who, who came to liberate the human race. Who could possibly imagine that the Holy One of Israel would consent to the level of being a carpenter? Only those with the eyes of faith could see that in that person God was confronting the reality of the human condition. There is no other sign except the words and the works of Jesus himself. Yes. Yeah. If an encounter with him does not convince you that God is a very present help in the time of trouble, then you will never know. Perhaps this is why, this is why uh, he compared the kingdom with a mustard seed yeah. and with yeast in dough. Both show small, apparently, you know, insignificant beginning, uh, but a revolutionary ending. The seed grows into a large tree and the bread can feed many hungry persons. So it is with the kingdom. Because of its small beginning, some viewers don't readily perceive what is actually going on. So far, so far this year alone, uh, my study said last night that we had at least seven or eight mass shootings. And then they said this morning that since April we've had 45. Yeah. What's today's date? We've had 40-something mass shootings since the 1st of April. <laughs> Including the one we had here in Omaha. And we're praying for the family of the victim. President Biden calls these shootings a national embarrassment. Meanwhile, Back home on the ranch in Lincoln. Your governor designates Nebraska as a sanctuary state for gun rights. He had so much to say until yesterday and he ain't said nothing yet. And neither one Biden are really paying attention to what's really going on. Did you know? You know it's bad when you find out about the situation in, in Indianapolis at the FedEx facility. It didn't necessarily have to happen. Why, why, Bishop, it didn't have to happen? I'm glad you asked because a year ago, the boy's mama called the FBI and said, hey, come get my son. Something wrong with him. Come here, Billy. You okay? You gonna hurt somebody? No. You gonna hurt somebody else? No. Okay, ma'am. God bless you. It's all good. Billy, we good. You got some guns? Okay, let's take the gun. We'll take that with us. We won't put your name on no list. All right, God bless you. Call us if you need us. <laughs> Lord, give me a sign. And it's easy to overlook the obvious when the answer is staring at you in the face. The black revolution is a continuation of that small kingdom. Whites don't recognize what is happening and can't deal with it. And then, unfortunately, there's some of us, black people, are African descendants who also don't recognize what is really going on. And we cannot uh, deal with the reality of our own context. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, Lord, give me a sign. Leading lady and I were watching a video, a piece of a video presentation yesterday about the dangers of this present day church because most people now don't want to come to church, Mama Charity, and see an altar. 
They don't want to come to church and see candles. And they don't want to see crucifixes. And, and they don't want no emblems about Jesus is the light of the world. Because to see all of these things, you understand, as stained glass windows, it reminds them that they are sinners and they are far away from the Lord. And so this modern day church has replaced the altar and replaced the pulpit for blaring lights. We don't have a need for a choir stand. Just put a band together and give us a few singers. Come on here. And now when you go to church, you can't tell if it's a nightclub or a sanctuary. I hear you, Granddaddy. I hear you, Arthur Leonard Posey. Call me old. Call me antiquated. But there are just some things we can't get uh, about with no more. Yes, yes. The hymnologist said it like this. In times like these. Yes. Who I want to preach? We, we, we need a savior. Yeah. In times like these. Yeah. We need an anchor. Yes. Be very sure. You got to be very sure, Bishop Teal, that your anchor holds. And grip the solid rock. This rock is Jesus. Turn to your neighbor and say, he's the one. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, he's the one. Lord, give me a sign. And likewise, in the spiritual world, the, the Lord has given us signs that points us to him and uh, uh, points us to, uh, amen, his son. But what is really happening now is people are looking for something more sensational than what we've experienced before. Lord, give me a sign. So, you, you know, you, you come to church and you look for a menu. Uh, and find out what's attractive to you. Uh, I preached at my mother's church a few years ago back in Chicago with the Get God in the Mind Ministries. Uh, this is the Lord's house. And this ain't no Burger King. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You can't. I'm sorry. No. You cannot have it your way. Not up in Mount Calvary. And when you want uh, your own way, and if this way ain't what you want, put in a request, go down the stairs, get you a few chairs, buy the podium, and start your own church. But you got to get up out of here. Because God said,
At first, before he spoke, I was despondent by those who didn't attend. But I learned something yesterday. That God had here who was supposed to be here. Only three or four of y'all contacted me. One was on vacation. One had surgery. One had a funeral to deal with. One had a family member that just passed away. One contacted me afterwards saying they forgot me. And it was all right because they've been participating all year anyway. But we have to ask ourselves now, uh, do we want to make disciples? Or do we just want to have seats filled with butts? We, we have enough members. We don't have disciples. We need some more disciples. Let's, let's not weaken the gospel message, Reverend Moore, to make room for cultural accommodations. Yeah. Well, you're preaching about DMX because I have to, and I thank you, Bishop Moore, I, I have to use a little shock value. Okay. I'm doing my part to get folks to tune in and let us know, you know, we, we are here, but you know, come on now, you got to do your part. I, 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 want, I want disciples, Sister T. I don't want clients. I don't want customers. Because if you're a client, if you're a customer of Mount Calvary, you might ask for a refund. And then I got to offer ministry based upon what you want us to do and be. You start pulling up, okay, a turbo uh, a play, hit play. Play that song for me. Hit play. No, don't sing that one. Play, play this one, but let this one sing it. Uh, 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 hit play. Bishop, Bishop, preach this. Don't, don't preach that. Yeah, hit play. Bishop, you do this. And, and so here I am. I'm sorry. You can't pull my strings. You can't accommodate everybody. All the time. I'm sorry, ma'am. I'm sorry, sir. The only thing yeah, I can offer you today is Jesus Christ. And if Christ ain't good enough for you, then Mount Calvary may not be the church for you. I did not leave South Hill, Michigan. With my wife and baby to come to Omaha, Nebraska to meet your physical needs. I got two women needs I got to meet physically in Omaha. My wife and my baby. We had clothes to give away, yes, and, and stuff like that was nice. Uh, we did we did a fair remote the outreach ministry last year, and the, you know those programs are nice. That's that's called outreach. But we don't give away clothes, and and we don't have job fairs and, and all of these things trying to uh, save you. No, that's just outreach. Because of all you came here for was for the for the food, and all you came here for was the clothes, or all you came here for was your uh, uh, your HIV results. When all of those things run out, so will you. Amen. And the only reason for you coming to church when you do come is because you are board president, come on. or you a trustee, or you a this, or you a that. As soon as we take you down from being a trustee and from being the board president, then you go down the street and lie and say we put you out. Lord, give me a sign. And I text 
<laughs> I'm sorry. Verse number 11. <laughs> There's a stern demand. Lord, I thank you. Jesus had to, just prior to verse 11, he performed. He performed one of his greatest miracles. He fed the multitude. The Bible says that he had compassion because the people, you know, had been with him three days and they didn't have anything to eat. Golden Corral was so far away. Kentucky Fried Chicken was so far away. IHOP had closed down permanently. And, uh, and he said if they, if they leave to go home to get a peanut butter sandwich, uh, 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 they would pass out on their way. Right. And so he, he took uh, seven loaves of bread and uh, the Bible says a few small fish and he fed 4,000 and there were seven fragments left over and so then the master gets in a boat with his disciples and they go to the region called Dalmanathua and as soon as he arrives there, the trustees, the Pharisees, I'm sorry, the religious conservatives, they were legalistic and they hated the pastor. They hated Jesus because he refused to do things the way that they thought that things should be done. So this gospel writer, uh, John Mark, uses this conversation, this request in verse 11, for a sign from heaven. Yeah? Uh, he uses this here, here as an as a object lesson on faith. They said to Jesus, show us a sign. Uh -huh. If you're really who you say you are, then show us something. Yeah? My sisters and my brothers, uh, this request for a sign, is not simply for a miracle. For you see in the synoptic gospels, Robbie, a sign is not a miracle. And a miracle is not a sign. He says if you really have divine authority, you understand, prove who you say you are. You remember Joshua commanded the sun to stand still. Samuel prayed during a battle and the thunder clapped so loud it confused the enemy. Elijah, you remember, he prayed and there was no rain, no dew for three whole years. And there's been enough preaching this year from Mount Calvary to save all of Omaha, to save all of Douglas County, to save all of Sarpy County. And the Pharisees had seen enough. But the reason why they didn't believe is because they didn't want to believe. Because if I believe on him, the Bible says I may have to change my life. He had already healed the sick. He had already raised the dead. He had already cast out demons. He had already walked on water. He had already calmed the raging storm. He had already fed a multitude the first time. And then he fed a multitude the second time. I gotta close here. But somebody ought to help me testify that he's been a mother for you. He's been a father for you. He's opened doors for you that were closed in your face. He's healed your sick bodies. And he'll make your children come home yeah, and apologize uh, for acting ratchet in public. Yeah. He'll put food on your table. Yeah. He'll put clothes on your back. Yeah. He will yeah, put shoes on your feet. Yeah. He will yeah, make a way yeah, somehow. Yeah. Yes, he will. Yeah. If you trust him yeah, and never doubt, yeah. he will. Yeah. I said he will. Yeah. He will uh, surely uh, bring you out. Uh, have you tried Jesus? Uh, I tried it uh, and I know him uh, for myself. Uh, how do you know Bishop? Uh, because he's dried uh, tears from my eyes. Uh, he raised uh, my bowed down head uh, and he caused my enemies uh, to leave me alone. Uh, he brought back joy uh, to my life. Uh, joy Full of glory. Won't he do it? I say, won't he do it? I've seen, yes, the lightning flashed.
action. I've heard, yes, I have. The thunder roll. I felt, yes, sin breakers dashing, trying to conquer my soul. And then I heard, I said, I heard the voice of Jesus telling me chambers still fight on. He promised never to leave me. Never to leave me alone. No, never alone. No, never alone. I got some more preaching to do, but I gotta stop right here. Yes, yes, he's a way maker. Yes, he's a way shower. Yes, he's sheltered in a time of storm. Yes, he's brave. When you're hungry, yes, he's water when you thirsty. Have you tried Jesus? Come on, somebody. I know what prayer can do. I know what prayer can do. I know what the Lord has done. And there's some people that still looking for a sign. But as for me and my I will serve the Lord. I believe he was born in Bethlehem. He was raised in Nazareth. Baptized in the Jordan. He healed the sick. He raised the dead. I believe that he is the resurrection and the life. I believe that he's the son of God. But more than that, I got to sit down when I tell you this. I believe that one Friday, yes, I said one Friday, he died, didn't he die, on the cross, on Calvary's hill, but I'm not going to stop there, but early, I said early, I said early, I said early, early, Sunday morning, he got up with all power, For a sign, I'm satisfied with Jesus. I'm satisfied with Jesus. I'm satisfied with Jesus. In my heart, you can't make me doubt him. You can't make me doubt him. You can't make me doubt him. In my heart, if I've got a witness, is there anybody here that's satisfied with Jesus? Is there anybody here? That understands uh, that the Lord uh, is my shepherd uh, and I shall uh, not want. Uh, is there anybody here uh, that understands uh, the Lord uh, is my light uh, and my salvation? Uh, whom should I fear? Uh, the Lord uh, is the strength of my life. Uh, is there anybody here uh, that would have fainted uh, unless I believe? Uh, to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. We are the Lord. Woo! And he will. I said 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 he will. Go to the church open. Perhaps you're over here and you don't know the Lord in the pardon of your sin. This is your opportunity to give your life to the Lord and to give your hand to this your humble servant. Perhaps you're watching and you don't know him. Just pray this prayer. Father, come into my life. Come into my heart. Wash me. Make me new. You are my Lord. You are my Savior. If you pray that prayer, welcome to the body of Christ. Is there one?
will take care of you. Don't get to tune in this Wednesday as we continue in our series, Holy Spirit, fall fresh on me. And tune in again next week and the week after as we conclude our DMX sermon series. We'll preach next week. It's a second extension, one more road to cross. And then we're going to conclude the series with his title track, Slipping, for the first Sunday in May. Amen. This is the Lord Give Me a Sign series. Those of you who are watching and you have not sown, won't you right now go to your cash app and sow a seed, dollar sign M3C5112, dollar sign M3C5112, or go to our website, www.m3comaha.org, www.m3comaha.org. Don't forget our first Episcopal Diocese meeting on the 20th. Happy anniversary again to Bishop Amaroan Jesus, to Deacon. Deacon and Deacon, that's Charles Ryan Anderson and Ryan Anderson. Happy 50th. Happy 50th wedding anniversary. If you're here in the sanctuary and you have not had an opportunity to give, before you leave, please, 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 please give unto the Lord. Amen. Until next time, we decree and declare all is well.